now for the final part of our three part mini series we're going to look at fishing down the edge in the winter months we've looked at pellets across we've caught some f1s on that we've caught maggots down the middle we've had a lot of hide we've caught really well shallow and on the bottom so what we're going to do is focus on the edge now this is important because then days when it's slightly warmer or you've got a bit of cover then fish can push down the edge and you can catch them there so what i'm going to do now is just jump on the box and run through it right so we're on the box now for the third part of the peg which is down the edge we've looked at fishing across with pellets catching up the shelf we've caught really well fishing on the bottom and shallow with maggots and now we're going to move to down the edge where in the winter it can be a really good area where you can catch some extra fish and put that weight in your net. Now, what you want to look for is when you're fishing this area is not to be too reluctant to fish like in summer. What I mean by this is don't fish tight in the bank where not a lot of fish can get to. You're going to get an odd fish there and you won't get a run of fish. What I mean by this is today we're on like, it's like a point of the peg and it cuts back. And what I've decided to do and I have done in the past on this peg, is fish, say, three foot off the point. It's a nice flat area, so any fish will be gathered in that area, but it allows the fish to come from a lot of areas and, be, and mingle around that area and catch them quickly. Don't be put off with, just because it's winter and, and not catching in the edge. On these F1 venues, F1s love sitting in the edge across. It depends where they are on the day, and it's about all, all important finding them out where they are. So what I wanted to do is just run you through this part of the peg so you can get the most from your sessions. So again we're going to talk about bait and there's two baits you can use. You can either use maggots and you can literally kinder pot them in and fish two or three maggots on the hook and try and get them. Or look to use some red maggots, just a medium cab pot, nice carbon stem float, say 4x12, 4x10, see how deep it is. But today we're going to use the fishery micro pellets with an expand on the hook. This is because I've had a lot of success over the years fishing like this down here. You catch some bigger F1s and it gives you a chance of an odd carp. Don't get me wrong, you can catch carp on maggots, but this just singles them out and you can catch them. Now, the feeding changes different to the across line. This time, I'm not looking to sprinkle bait unless I need to. I'm looking to feed a clump and sit there. This is because I'm not fishing 16 metres across there and I'm only fishing seven sections down there I can feed a little clump of either a small pot or a cutting our small pot depending on how the fishing's going just feed my bait put my expander straight in and I'm fishing straight away now you may ask what rig do we use so let's grab it for you now this time I chose to use a 4x12 over a 4x14 this is because I'm fishing down the edge I can be nice and delicate keep control of my float there's not really any wind on today now there's not any tow we've been fishing for a while so i'm going to set up a 4 by 12 the beauty of it is if you fit, set your match up and it starts to really pull through and it can't hold the 4 by 12 then you've already got your 4 by 14 set up for a cross so you can just drop that in and go again nine jaw slip 15 main line got an f1 pellet in 4 by 12 just blacking the float out we really like black floats in white water just a nice wire stem so it's all stable now this one i've just got number 10 strung out an inch apart and this time we've got a three inch hook length it's just so it's nice and positive when you get them bites down to it 16 sfl again 011 so you can get everything in that you can get f1s if you catch the old skimmer and you can catch them big bonus card which do live in here and they can come up surprised down the edge so what I want to do now is just spin round, get some bait on and try and catch some in the edge. So we're going to start off fishing down the edge now. I'm just going to slide an expander on. Same as across, just make sure that hook goes into the expander. Push it round, make sure you don't break it or anything like that. Now, first of all, I'm going to start off with a cut down small pot. So I'm not feeding too much and I know if I start catching fish, I can up my feed or depending what's in there. I'm just going to fill it, tap it down like that, so it's full, nicely, not going to spill out on my way out. Now, the thing I want to say is when you get to your mark, because we're not tapping the bait in, this time it's a bit different, 
you lower the pot to the water, feed the pot in the water, let the water push the pellets out, pellets will come out, lift your rig up. Again, like count to nine this time, just because it's a clump and it'll fall a bit faster. Get it and you're fishing straight away now. Once again, you want to look for them sharp, positive dinks. With them fish sucking the pellet in. Don't get me wrong, if you get a lot of fish coming in your peg, you feel you need to get a, your bait in a lot quicker. But what you'll find with this is because you've had a clump of micras, you'll be able to just drop your rig straight in and sit there nice and patiently. It's a bit different to sprinkling. You're not With sprinkling, you're trying to draw fish in all the time. And with this clump, you're just trying to catch fish that have been in the area and are milling around the area and coming to feed. A lot of the time when fish are coming in the edge, they're coming to feed. That's where they want to catch them, the bait, unless you've got a big reed bed. But you'll be targeting these fishing later on in the session. And really, you want to make the most of when they're there because they can be big fish, they can be bigger F1s, big carp. And if you're in a match, they'd be boost your weight up massive. But in a pleasure session, they're just nice to catch. Also, one little tip when you're feeding micro pellets, it gives you the choice of feed, feeding and changing to your hook bait. So, for example, here at Western, corn can be a really good hook bait just over your micros. This can be dead selective, catching bigger F1s and big carp. Sometimes nipping free, free maggots on can be better than expander. It's just about working what's right in the day, but for me, just like fishing expander pellet, keep that feed going in, nice and tight, nice and regular, but not too much. You just keep them fish coming. So there we go. One thing you will find in this peg, they try to shoot around the corner. Just keep the pole nice and to the left. Remember these will be bigger fish. Could be even be a carp. Just keep it nice and nice and to the left. Pull him round now. There we go. Didn't take too long for that bite, but they will be bigger fish. And big F ones or carp. Trying to run again. Me turning a bit eager there. He's off round the uh, off round the corner. Hey! It's only one thing with this peg. They do shoot round that corner, but you do catch a lot of fish there. So got to be an area fish, but. Like you see, that nine's not not too soft. Still in control of the fish, you just run that way. There we go. Fish is coming up now. Might be a carp, this. I think it is. Nice carp. Just take your time with them. These are the fish you don't want to rush in these winter months. These carp, real bonus fish. Don't really catch these feeding. Never catch them dobbing or on a bomb somewhere or quite big and angry in this canal pool so just keep it all nice and smooth Look at it. yes that's why you can still fish in the edge in this time of year look at this look at this fella nice big 
mirror carp down the edge on pellets straight in the top lip just get him back and try and catch another but just shows you've got to target these areas for them type of fish and you can see the setup is nicely balanced you can still get him in yeah he's run me around the corner a couple of times but he's still managed to land him so all I'm going to do is film a little cut down pot off again and feed some bait now you heard me speak about corn on the hook before and that's why you can see why like that is a great hook bait with them sort of fish coming into the margin they can be nice and selective you can catch them same principle feed your bait drop your rig in there and just be nice and patient you're only looking for three or four bites at the end of the match if you need to on the good days you can catch a few there's just somewhere else to go in your peg where these fish will come late on in the day don't get me wrong if you fish too close in the bank you won't really catch them as well as you can just off the bank it's a really good line it just doesn't mean they have to come tight and they just mill around where they want to be happy and this way it's good to show it on this peg because yeah this peg is probably famous for it's catching its fish tight in to the edge to the post but in these cooler months you can really catch really well just fishing about three foot off the post on the little plateau which is there you can catch all sorts, big F1s, big carp. And just put a nice weight together. There we go. A little sharp dink that one. Still trying to run me around that corner. Just going to keep it nice and low. Don't do anything too drastic. Just shows as if light's starting to fade slowly. You can get these bigger fish which go missing in the day. And just put them on your, on your match weight or if you're on a pleasure session, just a nice way to end really oh, look at him these are the ones you want big golden f ones look at this one look at that that is fantastic big fish them fall into the soft pellet approach What I'm going to do now is just have one more. Put the shot back on. Just have one more, and then we'll call it a day. Just a nice way to end this free mini series of how to fish this peg. Fill your cab pot up there. See if we went in there with a big, big pot, it might take longer to get a bite, or we might not get as many bites. So it's really important to think about what you're fishing and how you're fishing it. It makes a massive difference at the end of your, your match or even your session. <coughs> <coughs> So there we go, 
the last fish of the session. Still trying to run me around that island. Or the point. Ooh. Let's get with me. I'll be a big carp again. Now, things to recap while I'm just playing this fish back. Just be patient. Make sure you're not feeding too much. Bones on this one. Not feeding too much. Make sure you're fishing in an area where a lot of fish can come in your peg. I'm not just singling out tight to the bank because the water is ever so clear. Just fish a little bit further away from yourself. Still trying to do me around that, hat. that, that corner. Come towards me now. Got a bit of carp again, this has. Really nice to catch him on a winter day in such a clear conditions. Just to show that the peg can be worth setting up down the edge to catch him later on in the session. Don't get me wrong, you won't catch like your summer when you get loads, but you can catch a few later on in the day. You catch nice fish like that. Get hold of him. Nice colours on him. It went to background. So I hope you enjoyed this three part series fishing across with pellets down the middle, catching some of these great fish down the edge. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you on the bank soon. Cheers. Yeah.